Hey, this is Kim with Perry and Kim, and today we're going to talk for just a few minutes about be cool repricing rules. Do not be a penny undercutter, and you might be a penny undercutter and you don't know it. So I want to walk you through the settings for the rule that we use. I don't recommend that everybody set the rule exactly like we do, but I want you to understand the settings and decide what works best for your goals and your business model. So on be cool, come over here to repricing rules. And the one that we use, you can see the number of listings applied to it. The one that we use primarily is get buy box. This was one of the rules that was initially created, but we've changed it up a lot. So don't just get in here to be cool and use it the way it stands. You don't want to do that, I promise. The first thing to know about be cool rule settings is this get buy box setting. This one will override everything else. So if you think your rules aren't behaving the way they're supposed to, if you think your SKUs aren't repricing correctly, probably you have this setting turned on and it's overriding everything else that you set and so it's not doing what you thought it was gonna do. By default, this is set to lower within one penny. You know what that means? You're undercutting everybody else by a penny. You are the penny undercutter if you leave that setting. If you're going to use this setting, which I really don't recommend, you need to change that to zero. That lower to within means that it will come down a penny below whoever is in the buy box. They might be back ordered and you might have told it to ignore back orders. They might be merchant fulfilled. Whoever is in the buy box, you will come down a penny below them to try and take that spot. So set it to zero, not that default um, one cent. The raise is another setting which will test the upper limits. So once you get in the buy box, once you take their spot, it will nudge your pricing up a penny at a time or whatever increments you set. You can also set them to percentages and it will test how high you can go before you lose the buy box. You can divide those actions so that you only raise, you only test the upper limits. That'll help maximize profit. You can only lower which will um, make you an undercutter if you're not real, real careful. You can disable. I recommend disabling. This is kind of like the AI repricers. Sometimes it's too smart for its own good. And if you learn and use your settings, um, you can make it behave better than just this one setting that will override everything else. Understand and turn it off and move forward. Use your settings. So assuming you have this disabled, the next you're going to skip right past repricer settings because these take priority over your repricer settings, these advanced settings, and also the custom settings. So even though they're at the bottom of the page, remember that those are going to potentially override your basic repricer settings here. What we use in the repricer settings, we like to compete with buy box. Compete with low, lowest price is also an option, but really as FBA sellers, we're just concerned with the buy box personally, and we choose to ignore fulfilled by merchant offers. Even if they're in the buy box, we don't want to see them. That's not our competition. We have enough, we believe there's enough prime uh, members out there who will only buy prime offers. A lot of times they'll filter it so they don't even see the fulfilled by merchant offers. Those are our tar target customers personally, so we completely ignore the FBM. If the buy box winner is found between your min and max, if they're above our min, we go ahead and price, we match them. We don't go a penny under or a penny over, we just match. Percent, again, is also an option here, but we match the buy box. If the buy box winner is at our minimum price, we use our minimum price. The main reason this setting is here is for undercutters. If the buy box was at your minimum price and you were set to undercut by a penny, Be Cool wants to know, I can't go under your minimum by a penny, so now what do I do? Since you don't undercut, we don't undercut. Repeat after me, please don't undercut. <laughs> you can just use your minimum price in that scenario. Next setting, no competition. When you're the only seller, we love it when this happens, right? We're the only one. Not only are we in the buy box, nobody else has this product. A lot of people in this scenario like to go all the way to their max price. I'm concerned that sometimes our max price is just too high and I really, really don't want to miss this chance to sell. So I go to max minus 20%. If I'm the only one selling it, if somebody is in there looking at it, I really, really want them to push that buy button. So I, at the risk of leaving some money on the table, we go to max minus 20%. 
buy box winner found below min or above max so it's nowhere in your personal price range i love that these are broken out now they used to be one scenario now they're treated as two separate scenarios so there's some different ways to reason through this but i think the straightest path here if it's below min we go to our min if it's above our max we go to our max when there is no buy box, this is all those suppressed list, suppressed buy boxes, not suppressed listings, but suppressed buy boxes. So Amazon thinks the price is too high. They hide the buy box entirely and they tell customers that it's available from these sellers and then customers have to click through to the offer page. In that case, a lot of people will stay high because they have confidence that, uh, that people want it and they will take do what it takes to buy it. In our case, we play conservative again. We probably leave some money on the table, but we really want to get that buy box unsuppressed. So we go to minimum price plus 20%. We bring the price down, not all the way to the floor, but we bring it down in the hopes that the buy box will be unsuppressed, that other sellers will probably follow us down there, and then we can compete again in that window and hopefully sell, sell the item. Price change safety net. Now this was up on the initial, on the buy box settings too. Remember we have this whole thing disabled so it doesn't matter to us. Price change safety net keeps you from following low ballers down too quickly, all in one jump. This is mainly designed for um, private label or for wholesale where you expect the price to be very stable with relatively little competition and you don't you don't normally see big jumps. If a hijacker comes in here or a Chinese counterfeiter and they drop the price by half, you don't necessarily want to follow them all the way down. This, if you switch it on and you set your threshold, this will keep you from following them down too quickly. As RA sellers, we think of our min price as our safety net. If As long as pricing is within our min max range that we set, we want the sale at any point. So we keep this switched off. We did experiment a little bit, we turned it on, and we found that our sales dropped significantly. For us, not a great decision. Minimum price protection settings. This again is for people who like to undercut. Ignore it because you're not going to undercut. Don't do it. When adjusted price equals or is below min price, use min price. Adjusted price, that's the price you're the buy box minus your undercutting. You're not undercutting, so it's not going to go below your min price. Okay, those are all your basic settings. Those are generally controlling your pricing unless they're being overridden by that buy box up there or by advanced settings or custom settings. So let's look at advanced settings. This is where you decide if you want to set up special rules when you're FBA and you're competing against Amazon, when you're FBA competing against other FBA sellers, when you're FBA competing against fulfilled by merchant, we turn it off because we don't do that. If you have fulfilled by merchant offers, you have the same opportunity to set up separate rules, separate interactions. So when we're competing against Amazon, we do undercut them by $1. Our average sale price is roughly $50. So that $1 translates to about 2%. We have not done extensive testing, but sellers that we know have, and they found that two to 3% often seems to be that sweet spot where Amazon won't necessarily follow you down and undercut you. They may just let you undercut them by that little bit. And you won't necessarily get the buy box. It seems to vary from one category to the next, but there's enough price conscious shoppers out there that you might still get a sale. Ideally, we avoid selling against Amazon. So this is not our favorite scenario, but this is what we do if and when it happens. Against other FBA sellers, we match. We don't undercut. A year and a half ago, two years ago, a while back, Amazon was rotating the buy box between all the sellers who had competitive offers, which seemed to be about 2 to 3% of each other. Amazon doesn't seem to do that right now in the categories where we sell. If your experience is different, then you might want to stay a penny or two above, a percent or two above. Test it, measure it, see what it does for you, and you might bring up your profit margins by discovering that it works in your category. In our category right now, it doesn't work. We don't get the buy box if we don't match the cheapest price. Fulfilled by merchant. I want to tell you real quick why we leave this off. Be cool reprices against 
one offer. The first offer that it sees is the lowest offer. If there's a fulfilled by merchant offer in the buy box, because we're competing against the buy box price, remember? If there's a fulfilled by merchant offer in the buy box, and it's the low, so it's the lowest price, presumably, be cool, we'll reprice against that. If we had it set, for example, to $4 above that offer, but the next FBA offer was only $2 above that fulfilled by merchant offer, we found ourselves priced out of the market, priced non-competitively. We have to choose, essentially, if we want to compete with fulfilled by merchant or fulfilled by Amazon FBA offers. Sent because we don't want to we don't want to match fulfilled by merchant we know we can do better and if we set a threshold if we set a window that we want to rise above them that might take us above other FBA offers so we've chosen to switch it off okay now we're down to custom settings you can exclude sellers by merchant ID I know a lot of sellers do that if there's particular undercutters that they just want to wait out and let them sell through they put them in here. You can have a nice little list built there. And some sellers that we know um, have found that, that their profits increased when they did that, that they drew the undercutters up with them instead of following them down. Sellers with free shipping, expedited shipping. We choose to exclude sellers with low seller feedback. And I'm projecting there as a buyer, I don't want to buy from somebody with feedback in the 80s or below. That just sounds like a headache waiting to happen. And so we don't even compete with them. Total feedback less than three, that's a little bit of a courtesy. I want to give new sellers, a, give them a little advantage. They've got so much stacked against them. Call me sentimental, although people rarely call me that. I'm more of a Vulcan. Exclude sellers with back order product. I love that we have this option. This again, if you enabled the buy box, get buy box feature all the way at the top and you wanted to exclude sellers with backordered product, if that backordered offer gets into the buy box, you're going to find yourself competing against them. Another reason to kill that setting unless you really know what you're doing and you understand the implications. Sellers with handling time more than three days. And if you ever, ever sell used items, which we pretty much don't, but nonetheless, um, you do want to make sure probably that you're competing against items in same condition or better. I feel like that one's a no brainer. All right. That is our settings from start to finish. Um, hit me if you have any questions, if this was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up, you know, maybe, um, subscribe, tell somebody else about it. Appreciate you sticking with me for 13 minutes. That was a long time, but there's a lot of options and information in here. Be cool rocks, right? Be Cool has so many options. Make your rule. Do what you want it to do. Take the time to learn it and love it and use it to the best of your ability, the best of Be Cool's ability.